Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome David Frauci. David is Senior Director for European Government and Regulatory Affairs at the Internet Society. He strongly believes in the power of the Internet to transform people's lives, and that was the reason that made him join ISOC. David is a government affairs professional with more than 20 years of experience with a focus on telecom and digital regulations, as well as trade policy. Okay, David, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and one soapbox moment at the end. Um, let me put the first question on screen and read it out loud. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecom operators? So, Caroline, it is clear that the figures of traffic growth are significant. There's no doubt that there has been a transformation of the business of telcos with voice that is virtually flat or has been virtually flat in the last decade and data has multiplied by 60 in the same period. So this transformation, we have to say that it was not a surprise for the telco industry. They knew this was going to happen. It was in their forecasts and they have been investing heavily to be ready for this change. And you have examples of European operators that are already covering with fiber more than 90% of the households in their markets. So yeah, statistics show uh, which are the sources of the traffic growth. It's mainly video services, especially streaming, and also social networks and new services like gaming. But let's remember that the traffic, it's not pushed into the networks by these service providers. Some online service providers like Netflix, they do create content. Mm -hmm. uh, others deploy capabilities or users, users can, can share uh, what they want, media like uh, YouTube, social platforms. But it's the customers of the telcos that request the data uh, because they want to access uh, such content. So the traffic growth on the networks of the telcos is being created by the telcos own customers not by the online service providers. So this is a very important point that we have to stress. Um, if there is an issue uh, on the way customers are built, then that burden should not be passed onto the players uh, or the players in the digital value chain. Instead, the telcos, we see that they blame online service providers for the traffic growth. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is just a justification to claim for additional income. And this claim is unjustified. There's yet another aspect to consider. Uh, the European Commission has established, established digital targets for 2030, mm -hmm. and they are very ambitious. One gigabit for every household and mm, mobile uh, 5G mobile services everywhere. Uh, they are very ambitious, and the burden lies on, on the shoulders of telcos. But it's the business to build the infrastructure. Uh, let's take a quick look at the numbers. There are roughly 200 uh, million households uh, in Europe mm -hmm. and so far 120 are already connected with fiber so there are 80 million still to be deployed in seven years 60 percent of the job is done uh, at the same point telcos claim that their revenues are flat and that there is little growth possible this means that the financing of this 60 percent is complex uh, what we see is that banks that should do the loans uh, uh, for these investments, they question the business model. Because some people say it is absurd to think that every single household in Europe needs fiber. Mm -hmm. So what the telcos do, they look elsewhere. They look to other um, players of the value chain, but there are other options. Uh, let's remember that there is plenty of money from the COVID recovery funds for digital, mm -hmm. They allocated 160 billion euros, and that pot is not being fully used. So basically, um, it's not content is not being pushed in the network. It's being pulled by users, and users are paying for subscriptions to their telecom operators. And and you know, being in Belgium, we are paying <laughs> for our subscriptions to our telecom <laughs> operators. Um, and on the other hand, there is uh, an issue maybe of access to funding for telecom operators and maybe the focus should be on facilitating that and on creating other options than traditional loans with banks, 
for example, and looking at funds that are available to support them to attain the goals that are, as you said, extremely ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, looking then at, at some of the demands uh, that, that telecom operators have uh, uh, voiced in, in the past months, what do you think are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telcos? So I'll be very direct on this one. The danger is enormous. If the interconnection of traffic is regulated, and this means if the European Commission mandates that online service providers must pay telcos for each byte of data going on the networks, it's as if, if they were paying for minutes in the old telephone system, this is going to be the end of the internet as we know it. The fundamental model of internet operation that underpinned its, its tremendous evolution will be damaged and its potential will be undermined. I cannot be more clear on this. The, this decision will put an end to today's internet. The reason is, is very simple. The proposal implies that online service providers have to negotiate with, with each and every telco in each and every uh, EU member state. And there are hundreds of telcos out there. What happens if one of the telcos refuses to reach an agreement? Let's say with Meta. This would mean that when customers of these telcos type facebook.com on, on the web browser, or they try to use the app on the mobile, nothing is going to happen. There will be no response. The service will be not be available. So the internet experience for the European customer will be totally flawed. Mm -hmm. To avoid these situations, the internet has agreed uh, on net neutrality rules to protect European users and our shared internet experience. It, it, let's remember net neutrality is a simple set of rules that ensures that every internet user has a right to run the applications and access services of the choice. And it also determines that every telco has to provide access to all sites and it has to be done at the same speed and the same conditions without blocking or giving preference to any block of data. The negotiations, the negotiations that telecom operators propose are in direct conflict with these net neutrality rules. It is clear. No matter what the arguments are in the use by telcos, uh, they are in direct conflict. Regulating internet uh, traffic is going to break the way European citizens experience the internet. And there is another huge, huge risk uh, on this proposal that the internet, uh, that the, sorry, the European Commission should look into carefully, is that this uh, will cement the domination of large online service providers. Mm -hmm. They are, the large ones are the only ones that can bear the cost of negotiating and paying the telcos, not the small ones. So basically, this is not a trivial business to business discussion with no impact on the rest of the internet. It, it affects the fundamentals of the internet, how, how it has worked, and it is a direct attack to a certain extent on net neutrality principles where the EU is at the forefront of adopting and implementing those principles and which, you know, as a rule, um, uh, cemented the fact that users could pick the winners uh, on the internet rather than someone else doing it for, for them. And on those winners, what you're saying is basically it's making big tech even bigger potentially in terms of consolidating their position as, as leaders, let's say, in, in, in the content market. Um, not a good prospect at all. Um, let's look at the, the third and last question then. Um, it, it's more anecdotal, it's more um, a detail, but it's, I find it an interesting one. Do you think it's appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and telecom operators in infrastructure as suggested by some which the sum being obviously the telecom operators. Yeah, you're right. In the last weeks, uh, I've heard also online service providers showing with proud their investments in submarine cables and in content delivery networks. They've been doing these things in the last years and it's a smart move what they've done. In some cases, what they were searching was to have independence from tier one carriers. And in other, it was a matter of reducing latencies for customers. But in any case, this investment cannot compare with the huge investments and efforts done by the telecom industry in the last 100 years or so. 
uh, both in, in fixed and mobile networks, reaching almost every corner in, in Europe with complex geography challenges and so on. But it's normal that the telecoms made the effort. At least it's clear that it's the job, isn't it, to deploy networks, right? Um, obviously, the level of investments cannot be comparable at all. But it's also important to acknowledge that infrastructure investments made by content providers have been significant in the last years and that those investments have benefited the whole value chain, including telcos. So basically, it's uh, an, an apples and oranges uh, comparison if you look at, um, let's say, um, I think one of the analogies I heard, it's like a, a restaurant provider being asked, how much did you invest in the street that leads to your parking <laughs> to a certain extent? Um, Thank you. I think that, that that's a clear one. Uh, and also, I think your acknowledgement that there has been some investment in an infrastructure by content service provider, but not at the same scale as what is asked from telecom operators, because their job is to provide the pipes at right. the end of the day. Right. Um, we, we're reaching the end of, of uh, our podcast with that wonderful moment of freedom where you can uh, stand on a soapbox uh, and talk to the two strong women of Brussels, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, and Roberta Metzola, President of the European Parliament. And basically, you have one to two minutes to deliver, I would say, um, the fruit of your experience uh, to them in terms of what should happen for connectivity to increase and to reach the, its goals without affecting user experience on the internet. Okay, I, I would say that uh, this debate that we are having is very important. At the Internet Society, we are very concerned about the debate for several reasons. First, uh, we are in deep doubt that there is any market failure that requires regulatory intervention. So may I ask policymakers uh, to look well into the arguments and first make sure there is, that there is something that needs to be fixed. That's the first one. Second one, uh, we are concerned that there is not enough dialogue and transparency about the measures that the Commission seems to be considering. Regulating IP interconnection, uh, if this is the option, is going to break the model of the Internet as we know it, and it's going to hamper the experience of uh, European users. And because ascending party pays regime threatens the core principles that protect users, that's net neutrality and the open Internet regulations. And finally, I have to say that this is not an issue only for telcos and service providers to discuss. This is an issue for all the internet community. So may I ask for a consultation that is public and open to participation to other stakeholders. And I also highlight the importance, the importance of taking into account the opinion of BEREC. Mm -hmm. We should not rush into policy solution that uh, without deep analysis of the consequences. Thank you, David. So basically, evidence-based making uh, policy um, and making sure that everyone that is affected, so the general public too, is consulted, not just a selected few um, that have the ears of uh, the European Commission and the Parliament anyway. <laughs> let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for your clear views on this and let's hope they listen. But I'm sure that th this is the beginning of a conversation and we will have, uh, you know, part two in the next months, probably. Thank you, David. Thank you, Carla. <laughs>